So I've got this back up on the axle to do a little bit of work behind here. So you see this, you see this vent that is just in the back there. The plan is to try and cut some of that away um, just so that that back end gets some airflow coming in over the top of the motor because what I have a feeling is is that because of that so close to the motor literally almost touching it that's causing a lack of airflow and possibly the reason why that's burning up now I had a bit of an accident when I uh, when I uh, was taking this car off when I was lifting the car up and the jack slipped and I don't think you can see that but there's a um, this odometer cable just in there the jack slipped and hit the odometer cable so I'm hoping that that's not any major damage it's a bit cracked a bit cracked and bent but it still works so fingers crossed that I haven't given myself another job that needs doing um, but as long as it works I guess I guess that's fine I just I'm just kicking myself a bit for not um, balancing the jack properly <laughs> uh, so fingers crossed that that odometer cable isn't broken because that's one of the blooming hardest things to change on this car because you have to get all the way behind the dash and it's um, just only just long enough but anyway so what I'm going to try and do is to get this air vent out of here and uh, hopefully give the motor a bit more breathing space and therefore hopefully less chance of it cutting out from overheating which I assume is the issue that I had the other day um, because what I've been told is that the motor has a thermal switch that once it once it uh, once it flips the motor just won't work so um, there's a chance that that is the reason why I was getting those problems so fingers crossed and uh, we'll see right so as you can see I've cut out the whole piece that was in the back there um, there's now plenty of breathing space behind the motor and uh, and above it so uh, yeah I'm hoping that's kind of resolved it and also because I really moved that I could potentially screw a fan up there in the future um, and have a fan blowing directly onto the motor if, if um, it needs the extra cooling so uh, that's all of that done there's the old fiberglass that came out of it um, maybe I'll keep it and then if anyone wants to reattach it in the future um, it may be worth doing but what I've also done is had this brake caliper well had this brake off the um, brake drum and uh, I've just been sorting that out so now that it's now it's properly loose because it didn't loosen up before and that one was a bit stiff as well so I loosened that wheel up too um, but no, that's that's everything done. So I'm just going to get this wheel arch back on. And uh, but as you can see, with the wheel arches off, I can get under there. So once everything's done, I might take the wheel arches back off and see if I can get a nut up there that will uh, basically screw the battery bank down on the other side. But that's not so much of a problem because if it does lift, it hits the edge, and I mean. That's going to be going back towards the window. The most important part that's fixed is in the back here, um, so it doesn't lift up and go into the drivers if you hard brake. Um, but no, I'll probably put a bolt on there. I'll probably put a nut on there once I've finalised everything, just to be extra safe. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, there is loads and loads and loads of airspace now. And um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that solves the potential cooling issue that I have a feeling that I had with the motor. So uh, yeah, just gotta get everything back together and we'll give it a test. Right. So here is test two. Um, I as After I've made the uh, airflow a bit better behind the motor. So now the point of this drive here is just to see if it still cuts and see if I still have any problems um, running the car. As you can see, it's got quite a... quite an acceleration. But 
driver, much better now that I haven't got the uh, vent in the way of the motor. Um, right, so what we are going to do is to uh, take it up that hill and see if it overheats after, after that. Let's go and have a little look at the motor and see how warm that is. Okay, let's just touch that quickly. Ah, oh, that seems rather cool actually. I'm not sure if the motor was overheating to be honest. That seems, yeah. I could put my hand on it. So maybe it was a bit of a longer drive that we're going to need to do in order to figure out in order to figure out what's going on with this so let's carry on driving and see how long it takes if it does decide to break again we shall soon find out Acceleration to 30 is crazy. <laughs> I think what we may try and do today, because we're not far away from it, we're going to go up the A4, we're going to go up the uh, dual carriageway and have a little look at how well this car performs up the dual carriageway. The only problem is I don't have my sat nav, so I won't be able to tell you um, the actual speed. Losing too much of a voltage drop either. It's still, a, I only lose a little bit when I uh, put my foot down, which is quite good. Right. So um, let's head on to the dual carriageway. This hill I always used to struggle with the G Wiz. I'm barely putting my foot down and it's accelerating. I used to be stuck at 30 here. But if I put my foot down, I can go over 40. I'm almost at 50. Pretty amazing, right?
fingers crossed <laughs> that this is not going to stop working on the dual carriageway. We should be okay. Right. Foot down. Oh no. Oh no, my speedometer has stopped working. Oh boy. My speedometer has stopped working. So, I don't know how fast I'm going. That's going to need some fixing. That cable may have been completely bust and snapped the thing. What a shame. I mean, I can go faster, but I really don't know how fast I'm going right now. I'm faster than the lorry, so I'm over 60. So I'm definitely over 60, I just cannot see it. actually keeping up with traffic. <laughs> uh, keep, I'm overtake, I can overtake lorries in the G-Wiz now. How about that? <laughs> I can overtake lorries in the G-Wiz. Speedo's broken, so I'm in a bit of a pickle here because if it's actually snapped, then I need to figure out what I can do there. Maybe a GPS speedometer might be okay there because all I need is a speedometer. Okay, now well, that braking is insanely good. We're just going to head over into Tiffield, I think. And then head back that way. But how about that? So I'm just going to have a quick look at that speedometer to see if it's actually snapped in there. But the car seems to be working. I've just done a quick stretch down the dual carriageway. I'm gonna go and have another look at the heater, not the heater, the motor, and see how warm that is as well. Right, so the motor is warm, but it's not hot. So I think we're okay on that part. Now let's go and have a little look at the speedo where it had come off down here. Now the question is, hmm. Yeah, I think that joint just in here, where is it? Um, I think that has twisted and snapped. So, unfortunately, it looks like, it looks like I'm going to have to put in a new Speedo. Um, I've got a line that's on the Blue G-Wiz, so I may have to pull that out and get the speed, then get the line off of that. I'm not sure how, it goes in there um, but yeah so the dash may have to come off uh, however if you're allowed to have a GPS based speedometer uh, I might just do that and uh, save me the hassle so uh, and see I, it may be worth having a GPS based one anyway simply because I go over the speedo now so instead of having to have a sat nav all the time um, it may be worth it may be worth doing that instead so yeah so there it is guys um the gee whiz 
works. Uh, we've we've just done a stretch up the dual carriageway. We've gone up a hill, and it's barely getting warm. So I think it was because of that lack of ventilation that was causing our problems. So um, yeah, I'm going to head back home and uh, successful test run. So I just got back and um, when I was just moving slowly the inverter was making such a noise and um, the motor is a bit warm but it's not really warm however it's gone again the um, the throttle's gone again so I don't know what's going on there um, it seems to be fine when you're driving normally I just got down the bottom of the hill uh, I think it was overheating because the regen seemed lighter as well. So maybe I do need a fan in there and we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, but otherwise it made it all the way here. I stopped at the garage uh, where I get my MOT done just to ask them whether I actually need a speedometer to pass the MOT. And they said no. So, um, so what I'm probably going to do then is get a GPS one just so that I can see how fast I'm going, but you don't actually need an odometer, so um, there we go, so that's going to be an easy fix I think. So that's that for now, um, I've just got to figure out what's going on with this, now let's have a look, see if I put it into forward again, see what's that noise, that's what I don't understand is that it's trying to make, it's making a weird noise, so unless it's the uh, uh, I don't know. It's really strange, but it just doesn't. It just makes a juddering sound. So unless it's just the inverter refusing to put the amps into the motor, um, we'll have to see. And it'll be fine if I leave it off for about ten minutes, let it all cool down. Generally speaking, it's not a problem, and it actually, it actually runs. So I have a feeling it is an overheating issue which we will have to rectify, because if that is the thermal switch going off in the motor, um, yeah, we just got to figure that out. But uh, other than that, it was a successful run this time, up the dual carriageway, and not a problem. Uh, it just seems to be on, it just seems to be the last stretch, it always does it, and I'm really not sure what is causing that at all. But we will figure it out. Um, but yeah, so there we go. There's a second, the second test run, and it ended in the same problem. So um, we have to figure out what's going on there.